Hey, how's it going? This is Jeff with Final Boss Editing. Go ahead and do another draft of the orchard. One of my friends took a look at it and gave some notes. So, time to make good and actually take their notes, see which ones work, see which ones I'm not going to use, and go from there. So, let's get started. Okay. So they moved this paragraph down. Those side confusing to leave with dialogue. Yeah. Yeah. I think she is right. <laughs> I do want to find a better way to combine them though. So the first thing she did was took out all the double periods. And then replace with one. So I'll go ahead and do that. Hmm. So they led with this one instead. Make sure this is logged in. Okay. Um, search for signs of fruit. Let me see if the only one just signed. Turn to the broker. Hmm. So then I do think I want to combine these dialogues a little bit clearer. Hey, Casey, how's it going? Doing yet another edit on uh, the orchard here. So, uh, one of my really good friends uh, over on the right side of the screen um, took a uh, took a swing at editing it and actually had some really great stuff. So I am incorporating those edits and kind of doing that combination process. So, my own work is getting edited this time. Yeah, I need uh, any more people to submit stuff for me to edit. I feel like I've just been able to uh, to get away with editing my stuff and writing my stuff, which is great. But I feel kind of bad just uh, taking advantage of my editing stream that way. Hey, Skittles, how's it going? Good to see you. Um, today, I'm just... Actually, you guys came right in time. Um, on the right side uh, is one of my really good friends who's a rock star editor um edited the orchard for me and you can see even after i had kind of expended my limits uh to the maximum as far as um what i could find to improve on this like once you get a fresh pair of eyes you can see it's pretty red so um i don't i actually bought a domain but i've been too lazy to go ahead and put it together <laughs> so it's finalbossediting.com but i have not actually done anything yet <laughs> Beyond just uh, beyond just putting it together and buying the domain and, and not really doing anything with it yet, so I need to at some point. I uh, unfortunately have a pretty aggressive day job, so it's kind of the nature of the beast. Is uh, you don't always get to do fun websites, though. It, I, I do want one. Everything is hosted on YouTube, though, so all the edits I've ever done on YouTube, uh, the links in one of those uh, little things on the bottom. Um, cool. So, Charles Dalton's gaze drifted up to the Esmeralda sky. Sun, the sun used to dive right into the west into my return. Yeah, we already kind of... I'm actually going to switch out this line. You know, it wasn't that long ago when you could turn the stars on. Press its fist into the gene products.
I don't know if I need both of those paragraphs. Like, it's kind of nice. Um, there are all those descriptors. I can use these stars trying to like light bulbs out here. Hmm. I'm actually taking his, uh, it's actually her edit, um, really great editor named uh, Colleen uh, Corkery, um, and uh, actually incorporating the edit into the draft on the left. So I'm taking. Um, what, what edits um, that this person uh, brought up and it, what's actually really funny as I was saying earlier is like you can see that you know I had gone over this numerous times and it's always like so fun when like a really strong editor um, also takes a look at your work because there's always more that can be trimmed improved and like you know this insight in the first paragraph is is actually really really solid um... You know, it wasn't that long ago you can see stars telling about bubs out here. So I'm trying to um, kind of figure out the right merge because I agree that sh that um, the shift in the paragraphs should be done. I'm I still want to make sure I have the the phrasing right and the focus of the dialogue in the right place. Anything that's coming. Well, Mr. Dalton, imagine what the tenants of the new development will think when they witness the phenomenon for themselves. The broker Roberts said as he waved vaguely at the horizon. He was short and thick enough to fill out the seams of his expensive suit. Charles watched the broker straighten his snooby tie and rub dirt off his logo. Um, said Robert. Robert the broker. Ah, oh, thanks, Moocher. Um, so it is, um, so this is actually the, um, the one on the right is Google Docs, and the one on the left is Microsoft Word. Um, and I am actually, uh, I, I, this is like me incorporating the edits from her draft into a final draft, so I probably should actually save this under a different name so it doesn't get all confused. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know if that helps clarify, but it's actually one, 
four, 16. Um, I'm actually taking someone's edits and incorporating them into the main work and, and changing that work around. I hope that helps. Yeah, I know. It's it, What's really funny is, uh, <laughs> to that note, JP, is... Uh, I like you know you I've I've done like three or four edits on this and that's how you know like the, my friend who did this is a phenomenal editor and like you know seeing just how much changes how many changes they made is always just like yep you know there's always like you know that's what's so encouraging and fun about writing is there's always like a way you can dig deeper and and improve it even further um okay so you know uh, so it was public destiny as well. Imagine what the tenth in development will think when they witness this phenomenon for themselves. Said Robert the real estate broker as he waved vaguely at the horizon. He was short and thick enough to more than fill out the seams of his expensive shoe. Charles watched the broker straighten his See, like, simpler word choice, like, um, so she, like, a lot of the edits she's making are, like, you know, simplification, which is really what it all comes down to. It's, like, trim, trim, trim. <laughs> um, and I'm actually even trimming it a little bit more than, um, some of her recommendations are because I, she has a good point. It's a little bit fatty. Oh, nice. <laughs> What's up, Zons? Um, it really depends. I think um, romance novels are really good. Uh, there are some amazing ones, and there are, um, you know, poor ones. I think, like, the two things I use to gauge a good story is, one, does it make me turn the next page? So does it hold my interest? And then two, does it have a theme or a truth or a fact that teaches me something about life that I didn't know before? Um, and, you know, there can be different ranges on those, obviously. Like, it's not everything is going to, like, change in my life. But, um, like, you know, Harry Potter has a lot of romance and silly stuff like that. And I think those are amazing pieces of literature um, because they do both of those things. They have really good insights into life and they make you turn the page. Um yeah, I think, um, like, even Dresden Files and, like, some of those, like, more campy things have some awesome, you know, they get they get it going. Um, so I think, uh, I think yeah, there are definitely, you know, I think Wuthering Heights is, like, one of the ones that's, um, you know, a romance novel that has, like, a lot of poise in literature. But, uh, you know, usually they say that, I mean, it really comes down to, to literature is, like, hey, are you communicating communicating one in an interesting way which is like you know page turning and then two it's like when you now that you are communicating and keeping people's interest are you actually communicating something of value so i think genre doesn't matter as much as maybe just what the writer has to say through the genre so that'd be my two cents <laughs> but uh, it depends the both are both are all good let me know if the music is, is distracting. It's uh, it's like, I kind of like it, but um, I can turn it off for you guys if, if it's not your thing. Um, well, Mr. Dalton, imagine what the tenants of the development will think with some of them themselves. Said as he waved vaguely. Charles paused and looked across his orange thing. Okay. Greetings, Steve. Charles turned away. So yeah, she's pulling out a few of my dialogue tags, which is probably right. That's my point. City's too close. You know, to Los Angeles. Looks like the sun just before it comes up around four in the morning, but it never rises. It just sits there and festers. Um. So she's doing a little bit in. in of just like tweaking the dialogue to make it sound more colloquial. Uh, uh, city's too close. So she wants me to, to stick with the city instead of LA. Uh, 
Uh, should I make the contraction? Yeah, I trust your judgment there. She's pretty, she knows her stuff. <laughs> now that I see that it works. Please do. I love, uh, there's nothing more relaxing than just, like, hanging out. At least to me. Like, I've, I've actually watched Casey a few times, and um, it's always very chill just watching someone write and hanging out. Hashtag drop in announcer. Moocher is also a great artist. Um, he did a really cool, I actually have it over here. He did a really cool um, picture for us over at Final Boss Editing for our Christmas present. I, I, was, I, I probably can save the reveal. I think F Fox, Fox wanted to be around for me to, to show the picture. I can probably give you guys a really quick preview. But um, the, my co-editor, uh, the Fox Lady, wanted to be around to... To, to show Moochie's picture to the awesome uh, Twitch people, so uh, if if you want Moochie, I can show it now. But uh, we can we can save it for when we do all the Christmas stories and stuff. Hey, you turn. How's it going? Good to see ya. So right now we're doing an edit on uh, the Orchard story. The probably it's easier to see on the left side there. Um, let me know if it's too small to read, but it looks pretty good from my end of things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Represent. <laughs> well, I, uh, I, I, every, I get your emails whenever you come on, but uh, sometimes I'm at, I'm at the office, so I try to like watch it very briefly if I have a few minutes. But unfortunately, the once uh, during during uh, the workday, it's a little bit tricky. But I try to check out check out the drop in announcer. Um, I love TF2 though. I used to play TF2 a lot. Um, I can stream that one of these days if you guys, uh, if you guys want to change from this, uh, writing and editing stuff. That's a fun game. I don't know if my computer would melt, though, if I tried to stream and play TS2 at the same time. Mm -mm, nod towards the city. City smoldering light. Okay, I'm at Los Angeles. This is a drown. I can't imagine how much choice we take to do. Yeah, be more specific. So that's what she's. That's her note there. Is pulling out the vague modifier. And there we go. And then it rises. It rises. They're infestors. Oh, sharper. All right, she pulls out some periods. Okay, there are no, there are no, there's no, there's no proximity loss. And this is the reason you're seeing a generous offer from my client. Besides, Try this. Oops.
<laughs> we'll wait for Foxy. Okay, deal. ACM. Cool. How many hours? How many hours? It's the orange frame story. Yep. <laughs> so one of my uh, just to give you some context, um, this uh, th I just got an edit from a friend of mine. This may be actually pretty fast, and I can do a few uh, do a few other edits. I have some 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 other things to edit in the hopper, um, but. Um, but yeah, one of my friends edited this, and uh, she did such a great job. I figured I would do the incorporating her edits um, live, um, just because they were spot on. And you know, I'd gone over this thing like five or ten times, as you poor souls have seen. And um, you know, just seeing that there, you know, is always still opportunity to improve a work and stuff like that was was fun for me. And ah. Oh. Well, if you if you guys need illustrators, Mutri did a great job. We'll we'll save the reveal for when Fox is here on Friday, uh, Friday or Saturday. Probably we'll we'll stream again. So, be ready. Um, okay, Charles, pause. Okay, da, 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 she cut that part out. Okay, term sheet and the documentation are a one-time offer. And then she's just sh con uh, using contractions, which is probably a smart move. Don't suppose you'd let me stay. Oh, I see what she's doing. Okay. Build around my house. Robert buckled his briefcase for safety reasons. We couldn't allow it. Ooh, it's sliding around there. Hopefully, I didn't screw everything up. Okay, cool. These guys, uh, this band, All India Radio, very, very good stuff. I don't know if you guys have um, ever heard of them before, but they are very mellow. I don't know if that if the music's coming in, uh, coming in clear. It's good on my headphones, so I figure it has to be good. Okay. We couldn't allow it besides your... Yeah, this may be a little bit faster. A lot of her stuff is just tr kind of a little bit of a cleanup. Um, besides, yeah, she's she's cutting a lot of my contractions, which makes sense. Um, it smooths out in dialogue. It's much smoother. Um, I start reading the celestial and back on condo downtown with a healthy nesting to spare. Okay, and then Yeah, it's it's usually a style choice. Better sweet radio on Pandora. Ooh, I gotta check that out. I, I'm, a, I'm a big Pandora fan. Um, level illustration, nice. Ooh, you gotta send us that mystery story, Moocher. What the heck? You've been holding out on us over here. Um, okay. 
Yeah. Send you a list. Expect a twist message in a week or two. Sweet. Should draw the maps to the house and the island to keep myself straight. Well, it does help. Even my terrible drawing skills, I'll find myself drawing maps for. I'm working on a longer uh, novel draft right now. and So, yeah, her. Um, what. But this uh, editor's it's it's more of a, it, it's a style choice and it depends on the character's dialogue. Um, but in this case, I I think she's right to shorten the con like to contract like if it's like you know they will or like say they'll um, because contract like using contractions in dialogue is a closer mimic to speech. But when you go into your narrative summary like this part like Charles stood a foot taller than Robert and looked down you'd probably remove more contractions or at least use them more sparingly. Um, so that's kind of the, that's one of the things this editor is, is, is cleaning up in my draft is um, making how I'm using contractions consistent. Because there's a few places where I do use contractions and a few that I don't. So it looks like what she's done is kind of gone through and, and just made it consistent which I sometimes forget to do so that was a good move by her the mystery of jungle island oof well if you send over if you send over the mystery of jungle island moocher we can uh, I can edit it after this since this may take shorter than I expected I said my thing would be to have a thunderstorm at some point in every story that I write oh it's good it's, it was a dark and stormy night editing juice um, let's see, ignoring Charles, okay, Santa Monica, so yeah, and she, like, I kind of lean towards being really specific in my prose, but she made the right decision of pulling out the specific, like, city name here, I don't know if you guys can see that highlight in the stream, yeah, so that was probably a, a smart move on her part, um, just because... It, dialogue the priority is communicating the characters like voice and stuff like that and sometimes I betray the character's voice by like trying to over communicate and be like use specific details and stuff like that so that was probably a a, a better narrative decision on her on her part than the one I initially made <laughs> don't don't tell her I said that um unshaven nowadays there ain't uh, I'm just gonna go. Sweet. <laughs> we are not going to offer you a prices. So I'm gonna leave this one separate um, because usually when people are uh, firm, like in being like, we are not, like, um, they'll usually break out their contractions in dialogue. So most of her other edits are correct where it is more in the flow um my clients are worse so like this one is right like like it would it'd be awkward to say my client is aware that like my clients aware if the drought continues yeah it's so like she smoothed that line out a lot hardly have a need and then yeah so see the way i don't have consistent contractions i have a yol here i'll even highlight it so you guys can see and then a you will here so she being a very much more detail oriented, like I'm much more of a structure oriented editor, but she's much more detail oriented. So you see that she's catching um, the things that I missed, which is exactly why you let other people edit your work. <laughs> so this is actually amazing. Um, cool. Um, anything we offer, comma. Well, oh, I see what she's doing. Robert said, taking a step forward, period, if I hadn't. Sorry about that. Contractions that characters use. That doesn't use contractions. There's a reason behind it. Yeah, you're absolutely right, JP. Um, so I think it's okay to not use contractions. Um, but I think what, sh what th this editor is calling out in my work is the fact that 
I didn't have a strategy going in. <laughs> and then it was kind of like, sometimes it was there and sometimes it wasn't, and it was just kind of stream of conscious. So the fact that you have a strategy going in and you're doing it for a specific reason, and it's f hopefully contributing to who the character is or the narrative arc of the story, th that works. Um, the reason I'm changing them here is because I hadn't really thought about it uh, when I had done the initial draft, and now that this you know editor's bringing it up like, hey, figure out your contraction strategy is pretty much what she's saying um, and and she's right and and my goal for these characters is just to mimic normal speech as much as possible um, bring it <laughs> um, bitter writers make their <laughs> Bitter writer. I'm down. I want to save your Christmas story for Fox. Oh, yeah. sounds good. Sounds good. I'm excited. I'll be expectantly awaiting it. Um, but yeah, I know uh, Fox expressly was like, I want to see, um, I want to be there when we edit Moocher's story. Um, so so you got the, the priority. The priority. She was like, I don't edit it until, don't edit the Christmas stuff until I'm there. Um, and if I, if I know what's good for myself, I will listen to whatever Fox tells me <laughs> or else I will be in a, in a world of hurt. No, she's actually super, super nice. Yeah. So we are, I'm not breaking up that. Okay. And then I'm scoop, skipping down to this paragraph. Let's see if I can match the pages here. So it looks a little bit clearer. So I shrink that down a little bit. There it is. And then there you go, and you can see the side by side here. It's a tough, it's been a tough season. The farmer said his cheeks turned red. Charles kicked. Kick the dust. Awful dry. So she's correcting his grammar, but I actually am intentionally making him have bad grammar in this thing. So and because it's dialogue, I have a lot more freedom. So I'm actually going to disregard that particular edit. Um, and she's, like I said, kind of like survive worse. Uh, that's probably fine. She's taking out the internal parenthetical, and she's probably right. It's just distracting. Maybe I can use a colon instead. No, let's use a comma. Robert laid his hand. Yeah, it makes a big difference, right? I mean, because people have such random ways of speaking, and and cadences of speech. Um, maybe it's an M Josh. So she doesn't like how that's contracted, but I think that'd be mm. So it gets a little bit odd. This kind of has an odd repetition of don't and don't. So I'm actually going to, please don't go on your ship. Uh, maybe that's just part of the narrative. I can probably leave that and get away with it. He was, oh, that's true, actually. True, true. That's actually a very, very astute. See, this is the, this is why, you know, you don't ever have a perfect perception even on your own work. So that's why, you know, it's always, um, you always need external perspectives. Um, it's so hard to be objective um, on your own work after a certain point. So she's right. He wouldn't say whatever, but I want this to be kind of a dismissive remark.
So how they do it? Is it like one word? I think there's like some. I'm gonna look. Yeah, I think you're right. Maybe try may do that. Hey, Judy. How's it going? It's good. This is my new... I can actually give you guys a very brief tour of my tiny... <laughs> it's going to be a brief tour of my tiny new room in San Francisco. Um, such is the cost of... Such is the cost of living in the city. Shazam. <laughs> yeah, pretty pretty decadent, I know. But the new place is good. <laughs> Uh, the new place has uh, been very, very awesome. Chill roommates, fun crew. How's your novel coming along, Judy? I know you've been uh, hard at work. And there's millions. You know, they should those millions because of some vain hope that wasn't put of the charts will flicker or what have you. Yeah, I want to have it be a dismissive remark. Um, oops. Look at the facts. Hell, look at the weather reports. Oh, vacation. Where are you uh, on vacation? Hi, Bowtie Guy. Bowtie Guy. <laughs> it is not my entire living space. Um, it is my room. Uh, there's like a living room out there that's a little bit bigger. But it's um, definitely... Uh, Ooh, are you doing some skiing? I do love skiing out that. Oh, <laughs> bow tie guy. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> nice. <laughs> this guy right here. <laughs> oh, look at the facts. Look at the weather report. Remember, I'm on your side here. Yeah. Hmm, yeah, that's kind of a good continuity edit. So, I don't know if you can read that, but she says that, oh, I like the sun-baked citrus s image, but um, there's not really much citrus because of the drought, so that's not really a good image. There we go. I don't know if there's another. I kind of wanted to have two. Coconut Grove. Recluse. <laughs> no skiing but tubing. That's pretty fun. Yeah, I miss my old apartment, but so it goes. <laughs> Chat, I'll need a credit card. <laughs> Actually, I'm pretty. I'm pretty happy. I actually, I I did not realize how much I enjoy because I'm like a you know big bunk bed fan, um, because you know it kind of gives you that enclosed space. So I didn't realize how much I missed that uh, in my old abode. So I've actually kind of liked my my new pad a little bit more than I thought. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's so because you know you're. I mean, it's just like, you know, why it's good to have someone, especially like, 
Um, this lady, Colleen, is like extremely detail oriented, extremely very like very sharp. Um, so I promised her I'd buy her coffee for like the rest of the week. She's one of my uh, other one of our marketing uh, people who's just a rock star editor. Um, and uh, yeah, I was like, I'll buy you coffee for the rest of the week if you uh, <laughs> take a look. And it's worth it. It's like five bucks, you know, whatever, ten bucks, and um, good way to you know hang out and have fun and work on something together so i figured it was well worth it uh charles narrowed his eyes okay there we are sunbaked citrus okay boy's got a hell of a mouth on him hmm Hmm. So she's saying, <laughs> true, it is like a three page story, but <laughs> it's true. Very true. <laughs> Maybe a loft. Yeah. <laughs> Who chose wisely his name? <laughs> <laughs> I'll need a credit card law. <laughs> well, he's a moocher. He's got to mooch the credit card numbers, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I got to... Um, I'm debating on doing the rewrite of my novel because, you know, I always have, like, the document um, and then I, you know, write to rewrite. I was thinking about doing the rewrite on the stream, um, but... I always think I personally, since I'm like you know more of an editor, I always think the editing is more exciting than the writing. But strangely enough, more people tune in to the stream when I'm writing <laughs> than when I'm editing. So maybe I have it all turned around in my perceptions. Yeah, it adds up. Um. I think, let me see, it's 2,000 words. Ooh, it may be too short. Darn it. I, I may have to, uh, I may have to, let me see, what's the anthology page limits? I think I have one other thing I've written on the stream. Um, Final Boss Editing, what was that popping up? Can you guys see me jumping into Final Boss Editing? Oh, I'll figure it out later. But yeah, it may be, it may be too short. It's only 2,000 words. Darn it. I thought I could, I thought I was going to use this for the anthology, but maybe I'll do a, uh, <laughs> maybe I'll do a different one for the anthology now. I have a, I have the doctor's one I rewrote, which is longer. That one's fun. I did the edits, uh, edits on that a little while back. Um, boy's going to have a mouth on him. Trail I just felt the cards are trees, but that one still needs a lot of work. I'm very OCD about polishing, polishing, polishing. Um, like things, something's gotta. I believe that something's gotta go through five edits before it's like close to being professional quality. Like three to five edits, usually. And that's like why you know that's why professional quality, unfortunately, is professional quality because those those suckers have the patience to like plow through it five times, or you know, at least three minimum. Like I don't know, <laughs> like you know, it takes a lot of work. I think. Please get more. Pushy, maybe like persistent or pushy.
Damn pushy sales person I've ever met. This is me for a box of Capri Suns. Ooh, 8 to 12k. Ah, bummer. I gladly give a Tuesday for a hamburger today. It's true. I'll paint your house for a cheese boy. I gladly give a Tuesday for a hamburger today. Yeah, that's true. Move for a box of Capri Suns. That's worth 8k to 12k. Ah, well, we'll see. I may not have. I may not have anything that's that long. Sad day. I haven't been. Uh, Streaming uh, too much stuff that's that long lately. That's actually a good. It's a good size story. Four drafts, I think. Then a proofread. Yep. With the editors, I think I got my money's worth. It's worth it. Yeah. It's always. I mean, I think it is worth it to to pay for an edit for a professional edit. Um, make sure they're they know what they're doing. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I've gotten burned on that a few times. Pay some good money for an editor, and then you're like, dude, what? what is this? Uh, what's the anthology titled? Untitled. The Great Dictator, 1940. Hey, Bookfish, how's it going? Nice. Good job. I got a, if you have a stream, I don't know if I'm following you. There you go. Bam on that I gotta get more gotta get in you know it's always fun to see you guys it's uh it's encouraging it makes me be like all right I gotta get my act together if, if everybody's out writing and getting stuff done gotta be disciplined damn pushy salesperson I ever met Charles said in his eyes his eyes fought the car's retreat and the broker drove off the crunch leaves yeah That'd be open for an embrace. That chair mic's probably going for this one. I don't know. That's true. It's all good. I don't want to. It's. It's um. I'll I'll probably have to jump in on the next compilation, but I I don't want to throw throw any um. Yeah, I don't want to throw any wrenches into into anything. But yes, I will in the future, unless you accept screenplays, because I have written a screenplay on this uh, on this uh, on this um, stream. Because this is I, that's actually mostly where my specialty in fiction really is a screenplays um but yeah i will I, I can do a screenplay or i can do um next time i'll definitely be on it hi fishy oh my julie magnus dag i mean way to come up with something vivid come on people <laughs> A twitchy anthology. <laughs> uh, I well, I don't know. I would I would be more than willing to do that, but I don't know if um if doing just chapters and stuff is 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 kosher. You've got six weeks, deal. Um, all right. Maybe I'll maybe I'll get my act together and, and crank something out. You can. I believe it. <laughs> I, uh, my, yeah, all right, I'll, I'll give it a shot, I'll, I'll think, uh, I gotta, I gotta consider doing it, my, my one goal, though, my, my, my resolution this year is to do f two full edits, like, rewrites of the novel, which is inordinately long right now, and one of the edits will be drastically cutting it down, so I will, um, yeah, Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, 
Um, but my, my goal is to do two full edits of the novel in 2016, like full rewrites, like complete like development edits. Um, so, um, I may, just because it took me nine months to do the first draft, um, it's long. I almost feel embarrassed, uh, embarrassed saying it. <laughs> so I'm trimming it, and my goal is to get like minus 10%. So it's my goal is to get it to like minus 20% to like 110. I think I can get there. Yeah. Way too long. <laughs> But it's good. I kind of know where I need to, t to trim and yeah, it's just like, you know, killing your darlings and like, you know, painfully biting your thumb while tears like stream down your cheeks. I'm going to try to get it published. Yeah, that's my goal. So like, you know, that's probably one of the reasons I, if, um, if I haven't already written it, I may have to, you know, draft no judgment. You just need words. Yeah. That's true. That's true. But now uh, I'm doing an edit on it right now, um, which it's hard because I've actually printed this one out rather than doing it on the computer, so I wasn't able to stream the edit, um, though I should. Later, Moocher. It was fun hanging out. Have a good one. Um, grandparents. Let's see. Right there's he blushed. His grandparents had raised him. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Had enjoyed. I don't know, I'm using the past perfect tense already though. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, really? Oof. 89 to care a bit easier. Oof. I actually haven't gotten as far as targeting a publisher, to be quite frank. I've uh, more just been like, I got to get it written. I'll figure out who to sell it to when I have a product. It's kind of the mentality I've taken. That's the challenge. I'm more used to the screenplay world, so novels are a bit more foreign to me. So this is actually interesting, yeah. 100K books, yeah. <sighs> we'll see if I can shrink it even more. I think it needs more, um, yeah, I think I can get it, I think I can get it trimmed out further. Oh yeah, if you're writing a 90k book, that's a pretty, that's a pretty low advance. Oh, well, we'll see. Hmm. Yeah, I got a lot of trimming to do then. 40k words. I bet I can shave 40k off of it. It's very fatty right now. It's like it's like an obese, obese. Um, yeah, maybe I'll just go for 90k. See if I can get it that short. That'd be ballsy. That'd be fun. Well, advance is better than nothing. 80k is a sweet spot. Yeah, it's almost a. I mean, that's not much more than. Um, 80k sweet spot. Yeah, that's really short. That's almost like a novella. Because 50k is a novella. So that's almost like that big. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Well, good to know. Well, I'll knock this baby down to the studs and see if I can do... Um, yeah, it's you can always trim. Oh, yeah, I, I had a... I did a screenplay a long time ago and like cut that down, you know, by a good 10, 15 percent pretty easily. And now looking back, I could still probably cut it down a lot more. So there's a lot of um, a lot of opportunity. Yeah, it's a tough industry. That's why um, I still have a day job, sadly. <laughs> um, but those. I don't know if I want to put dead in there. Family that.
Here's the crap out of it. <laughs> the K plus Tom's Netherlands. Yeah. I right, publish out there. <laughs> That's true. Um, sure, those kinds of books. Pretty expensive, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think I at least have to get it to 100 or less. Um which is, yeah, getting to be pretty clear to me. So it's just like um, trimming out that first part is going to be huge. Night, Casey. Of course. Thanks for hanging out. It's always so fun um, chilling with you guys instead of doing the lonely task of writing all by oneself. Get some rest, buddy. Um, the alien... I think that's okay. Crab grass. Thanks. Just a little bit. I'm like going blind trying to read that. <laughs> hmm. Really, I've cut down the books they're taking on, so it's hard to do. Four is about five times harder. Ugh. Uh, so it goes. I mean, I think at the end of the day, you know, my goal is to make a really good product, uh, you know, independently. Uh, so if I can get it, oh, hey, Foxy Lady, how's it going? Um, but yeah, if I can get it, uh, if I can get it published, um, I will definitely try. And if not, I'll probably just self-publish because goodness knows I've put enough work into it to get it out there to somebody. <laughs> but I think both are good options. Um, so for me... Yeah, I think it's still, you know, the publishing world knows what works, uh, which is why, you know, they've done as well as they have sometimes. So I think it is worth it to try to, uh, you know, it's also nice when you go through a system like that because they have a lot of editing built in, a lot of systems to kind of help pave the way a little bit. Um, so that's kind of like a nice thing um, just because you don't have to pay your own editors. <laughs> from nice dude send your link no I but I, I, I like your um, no I think I like I like your uh your your thoughts there, Carver, just because it's more like um Yeah. Representatives. Um but no I think it's um That doesn't bother me man. Get some, uh, I mean, because I'm actually curious, and I would go read one, <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I mean, like, no, I think you're right, I think it really is just like, hey, try to get some people if you can, you know, I think the one thing that, that, that I'm kind of hearing time and time again, that it's like, um, you know, length, shorten it, shorten it, shorten it, shorten it, which is always, which is always, um, critical 
Um, so, you know, I think I, I just, I mean, whether or not I submit it to a publisher or self-publish, I think, you know, 140K is, is really, really long. So I think my goal is, you know, 110 or less. Um, oof. Uh-oh. Is my internet freaking out? Okay, you guys are still alive. Um, but yeah, <laughs> sorry, but, but what I was saying before my... Uh... Is everyone back? Well, what I was saying before my... my sc <laughs> before Twitch died was that... Um... Twitch derps, yeah. Sweet. Whew. Hey, how's it going, Ogina? Well, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, I think... That's what it comes down to is, um, you know, I think, you know, the publishing industry has a point. It's like, keep it short. Um, brevity is a source of wit. Uh, and having a forcing mechanism to, like, keep your novel efficient and short is, like, it, it, I think it helps. Um, and, you know, that's my goal is to try to get it a lot shorter in this next draft, which is probably why it's going to take a few a few months instead of a few weeks <laughs> to, to edit. Um, and then the next, uh, the next kind of thing is, you know, hey, send it to editors, send it to publishers, see what I can do. And if it works, great. If not, you know, no harm, no foul. And then I'm probably still going to at least self-publish that sucker because I, uh, I would, um, <laughs> I would be, uh, <laughs> I would be very, very, I would be, I'd be pretty, pretty ticked if I let that sit on the, sit and collect dust. So I'm going to get that thing on Amazon. That's one of the nice things about novels as opposed to screenplays because I've written a few screenplays and, you know, if they don't sell, like, well, go write another one. <laughs> like, the uh, nice thing about novels is you can, you know, there's still, it's a completed art form, so you can go out and actually get it, get it done. And that's the goal. I mean, it's like, hey, can you... Uh, the nice thing, though, is because it is sci-fi, uh, JP, um, what I've understood is there's usually a little bit more leniency just because you need a little bit more room to set up you know, do world building and stuff like that, which is always a pain. Um, but we'll see. Dutch people can use Amazon. No. Awesome. Cool. Well, it's good stuff though. I, I love, I, I appreciate the, the comments and I will definitely hit you up if, if, um, I mean, it probably won't be for a year or two until I finish this darn novel, but, uh, in a year or two when it's actually in a professional, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's at a professional level or at least something that I'm satisfied with. I will, I will let you know if I can get it published or not. Um, it's fried more seasons. That's so hard. Wait, let me just read that out loud just so I know it makes sense. Once a fungus had run it. I still want to use the past perfect. It's kind of a weird thing, but I want to keep it consistent. Half the oranges of not the oranges of his trees, but the orchard still produced a profit. Oh. Still had produced a profit. Yeah, that's probably better. The, the, she's right. The verbs didn't agree, but um, I should have changed them both to path perfect instead of um, 
the inverse. Uh, what's up, homies? <laughs> yeah, no. But as a new offer that we raised short very sadly, uh New offer out there, I'm tired, yeah. Offer, yeah. Uh, deal. I will uh I'll take it off. You know, with sci fi. It is indeed a sci fi novel. Um if you guys uh wanna read it, feel free to let me know. It's definitely in it's at a very rough state. Uh, and you'll probably see it if I do revisions. You'll see it um, come up on this thing. Nice. Web shop. That's like Amazon. They thought that. Jeez, that's hardcore. Jeez. Smash words, yeah. There's a lot of stuff out there. I mean, I think that's where the fiction industry is is, is going for some things. Is they, you know, publishing is just such an expensive industry, man. Or just like different distribution channels, like you know, building your own distribution, getting your own followers, like stuff like that is where, you know, um where really the rubber hits the road since then okay these are just like trims Maybe Yeah. And the course just was carrying. Sweet. And that's that. Those are her notes. You need a good cover. You'll need a good cover designer. <laughs> nice. You said if you're published, they'll throw a big. Jeez, that's crazy. Man, I uh, I haven't been up on industry. Eh, I mean, I for me, I just like love sci-fi. <laughs> Yay! Well, I mean, you, I mean, as an editor, you eventually you just kind of remember them all. Um, <sighs> Amazon's biggest distribution channel. Very true. I mean, I think at the end of the day, it's, um, yeah. I mean, the nice thing about shorter novels, too, is you can write them a lot faster. But, um, just do the publisher if I cut back. Are you, uh, well, if you do cover design, you turn, let me know. I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll recruit you. Uh, decent publisher. Very true. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of these little boutique, um, boutique publishers out there. I mean, one of the nice things is, is you know, um, there are so many with the exodus of email and you know all the channels that are out there. Um, there are a lot of opportunities for. Generating your own list, generating your own website, um, building newsletters. Like, that's what actually Colleen, the girl who edited this, does. Is She's like, you know, blog, newsletter, all this stuff. But it usually is you kind of have to just do it yourself, which sucks. But, you know, that's kind of the way it goes with novels, too. It's like, no one's going to write it for you, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> and you just kind of have to just, you know, you know, bite the bullet and say, okay, if I want to make this happen... I'm just going to have to do everything in my power to make it happen. And it's kind of the fun part, though. You turn is only an awesome upcoming streamer. Oh, you turn. I think I followed you, right? I followed you. Yeah, I followed you. And there it is. There's the heart. I remember I saw that sweet 
Yeah, this thing is pretty cool, your, your fish background that you drew. Well, if you like sci-fi, you're welcome to read the first draft. And uh, you like, that's awesome. So I stayed in my thing. Yeah. Yeah, and it'll probably change a lot in the future. Like, I think... But honestly, by the time I'm done with my novel, the industry will probably look a lot different. Like, publishing is, like, night and day. Nice. True that. And it's good to know, though. I mean, like, you kind of... I think you're right, JP. You gotta, gotta, you gotta know what you're in for. Um, vegetation, if I can spell that right... Oops. All right. Should we do a quick read through here? I'm going to be sending it out tomorrow to both publishers and um, some other people. So, and now that it's official that it's too, it's too, uh, what was it? It's too, uh, it's too long for, um, it's, or it's too short for the Twitch publish publication i have to go the traditional route now curses but i will try to get something for twitch if i have time i really want to um you guys are such an awesome group of people um i want to support you know support you guys with with whatever i can um okay so let me expand this puppy all right and then i will close this out Uh, one moment while I rearrange this uh, scene real quick. And then I will grab a glass of water. All right. Great. And I can do the traditional. Oops. You guys are like, what are you doing, man? There we go. I can actually see you guys. Yay. I will be right back. I'm going to grab a glass of water. See, I will well, chat's been going in here. Yeah, sci fi is great. I love sci fi as well. I haven't yet, actually. I've been, um, I've wanted to have a finished work. I, I probably could have gotten an agent in screenwriting, but then I moved to San Francisco, which, um, I don't know if. Fiction, fiction agents like prose agents and screenwriting agents are usually a lot different. Um, I probably could send my work to a uh, screenwriting agent and probably get represented, but I kind of am leaning more towards doing novels anyways because they're a little bit easier to get out there. Um, so I've kind of moved away from pursuing that too actively just yet, but I should probably. Maybe the last deadline. No, no, I have four new ones. Nice. Getting the getting cranking. Night, you turn. Take care. Yeah. So if I'm, I mean, I probably could do. I mean, screenplay. That's a crazy industry. It's fun though. I love writing screenplays. Um, but I just like storytelling in general. So for me, I'm like, I don't care. Um, the one benefit of writing novels and, and prose instead of screenplays is 
at the end of the day, you have a product and like a finished thing. Whereas in screenplays, you have a blueprint for a product, <laughs> which is the film. Um, so unless, you know, I mean, and I have, I probably should, could film a lot of it myself, but unless you have a lot of time and you want to film it yourself, it's easier to, easier to pursue, um, easier to pursue, uh, novels or get funding. Uh, if you have, if you're like doing screenplays, you just got to go and like hustle and get someone to give you a couple of thousand dollars to film it, which is also a tricky prospect, <laughs> tenuous prospect. All right. I'll do the quick read through here. It shouldn't only take a few minutes. Charles Dalton's gaze drifted up to the late afternoon sky. The sun rested just above the waving tops of his orange trees. The faded blue eyes, his faded blue eyes drifted over the rustling leaves. I'll turn the music off if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna be yammering here. I'm like, man, I can't think. Um, the sun rested just above the waving tops of his orange trees. His faded blue eyes drifted over the rustling leaves and searched for signs of fruit. But the sun was the only orange in sight. He turned to the broker and said, You know, it wasn't that long ago when you could see the stars turn on like light bulbs out here. It always happened right before it rained. Charles pressed his fists into his jeans pockets, forming little blue hills with his knuckles. The stars would just pop up like dust settling from Apollo's chariot. I'd sit on the porch and watch till it was dark, knowing a downpour was on its way. Well, Mr. Dalton, imagine what the tenants of the new development will think when they witness this phenomenon for themselves, Robert said. Robert, the real, his real estate broke said Robert, his real estate broker, as he waved vaguely at the horizon. Um, as he waved vaguely at the horizon, he was short and thick enough to stretch the seams of his expensive suit. Charles watched the broker straighten his snoopy tie and rub off his polished loafers. And rub dust off his polished loafers. Charles paused and looked across the orchard. The incandescent glow of Los Angeles' city lights rose beyond the western hills. Gritting his teeth, Charles turned away. They aren't going to see it anymore. They aren't going to see it because it's gone, Bob. That's my point. City's too close. He nodded towards Los Angeles's... Oh, uh, yeah, she's probably right. <laughs> Dang it, she's right. Toward the cities. Whoops. Wrong button there. Let me see, what was her recommendation? Yeah. It looks like the sun just before it comes up at four in the morning. It never rises, just sits there and festers. There, so there are no stars to miss, Mr. Dalton. Remember, your proximity to Los Angeles is the reason you're receiving such a generous offer from my client. Besides, with the drought, I can't imagine you have much choice but to take our deal, Robert said as he raised his thin eyebrows at Charles. Charles stood a good foot taller than Robert and looked down at the abundance of gel in the broker's hair. He ran his fingers through his own loose gray hair with the kind of relief before applying. I've weathered, I've weathered worse droughts. Ignoring Charles, the broker set his slim briefcase on the hood of his candy apple red Porsche and rummaged through its contents. He drew out a pile of papers and shoved them into Charles' arms. This term sheet and documentation are a one-time offer. I need them signed and on my desk by Monday if you want to take advantage of this price. It's the highest it'll ever be. I've lived here most of my life, you know. Don't suppose you'd let me stay and just build around my house, Charles asked, rolling up the broker's papers and using the point of the stocky building behind him. Robert buckled his briefcase. For safety reasons, we couldn't allow it. Besides, we're well aware of your finances, or lack thereof. Why starve here when you could sell this dry land and buy a condo downtown with a healthy nest egg to spare? Charles hunched in bewilderment. Uh, hunched, comma, bewildered. Eh. His tall, thin frame shrunk as he stared at his worn hands. You don't think an old farmer like me could live in a place like that, do you? He rubbed his unshaven chin and gave Robert a quizzical smile. Nowadays, there aren't too many places left for folks like me. Besides, I swear the air is fresher than usual tonight. Want fresh air? Buy a ranch in Montana, Robert replied. His small eyes narrowed to dark circles as the last remnants of his positive veneer faded. You could quadruple your acreage and quadruple your revenue. You know what that is, right? We're not going to offer you a price this generous again, Mr. Dalton. Charles raised his head to object, but the broker cut him off. My client's aware that if the drought continues, you will hardly have enough to eat, and then you'll be forced to take anything we offer. Robert said, taking a step forward. If I hadn't assured him multiple times that you would be reasonable, he would have starved you out. 
for the remainder of this drought and never given you such a competitive price. It's been a tough season, the farmer replied as his cheeks turned red. Charles kicked the dust at his feet into a trench and stared up at the cloudless sky. Awfully dry, but like I said, I've survived worse. Robert laid a hand on Charles's bony shoulder and replied in a softer tone. It's been a tough decade, Mr. Dalton, one of the worst on record. Don't go down with your ship and lose millions because of some vain hope that weather patterns will change or stars will flicker or what have you. Look at the facts. Hell, look at the weather report. Remember, I'm on your side here. Charles narrowed his eyes. He studied the broker without speaking. They held each other's gazes for a few long seconds as a hot wind shook the trees. The scent of dry leaves dominated the air. Breaking eye contact, the broker grunted and toffed his briefcase into the Porsche. He opened the door and slipped inside. I need you to sign that term sheet and get it on my desk by Monday. The engine roared and the car bounded toward the interstate. A cloud of dust rose in its rake and drifted between the orchard trees. The orchard's trees as the car wound out of sight. Damn pushiest salesperson I've ever met, Charles said as his eyes followed the car's retreat. As the broker drove off, a stitch of tension eased out of his shoulders. Out of Charles's... He ignored the crunch of dried leaves under his feet as he turned toward his house and climbed up the porch steps. It was a good-sized, stout sort of home. If it had arms, it would be open for an embrace. The rough roof sagged slightly with the repose of the aged and the wise. Walls that once housed a large and bustling family now basked peacefully in the afternoon sun. The north wind blew harder as Charles walked inside. He muttered a few more comments about the broker under his breath as the screen door snapped shut behind him. Charles's chair slid easily across the smooth wood floor as he took his place at the kitchen table. He pulled... He pulled the term sheet and his documentation from, its, from his pocket and spread the papers out in front of him. His old soup can turned pencil holder rattled as he scooted his chair forward. He rested his reading glasses on the tip of his nose, and the number came into focus. Fifteen million dollars, and he only needed to pick up a pen and sign. The wind rose outside, and the old rocking chair on the front porch creaked. That chair marked the spot where his grandfather told his grandmother they no longer had to rent, that they could settle down instead of family, that had brought the land. Charles wondered... What they'd say to their grandson if they knew he was selling their family orchard for a clean $15 million. He blushed. Charles's grandparents had raised him and his parents here. Over the years, they'd fought to keep the land of the family despite receiving tempting offers of their own. He and his sister had enjoyed the best childhood they could have wished for because his family had saved enough to buy the orchard in the first place. Even now, because of them, he lived in a snug spot between the pages of an old photo album full of memories. He closed his eyes and imagined his family's voices, filling the now empty hallways with conversation as laughter. During those years, they did everything together, fishing, harvesting oranges, stargazing, everything. But like a dandelion, it only took one puff of wind to scatter his family to the four corners. Charles was a stem that stayed behind, marking that the beating heart of a family had thrived there once and might again, but he was getting older now. An urge in his gut told him to pull one of his favorite while well, talking maybe Charles got a reaction to try to make it more Hmm While talking. Um further up. I, I don't know it seems like there's like a little bit of a lag, so I don't know which maybe up here. Damn push you salesperson. Mmm. That's actually a good idea doing like a scene agitator. Hmm, I like that. Like right when they're at the car, I will, I will, uh, I will go back and see if I can put something like that in. It's actually a good idea. Let me, um, I'm going to, I'm going to just keep cranking just so I, I'm, for some reason I just, my brain is like, it just only is like a one track. Um, but I'll keep cranking. We're almost halfway done. And then, um, I will actually go back and take a look at what you were uh, mentioning. Cause that's actually a good idea. Um, the chairs mark the spot where his grandfather told his grandmother they didn't know how to rent. Okay, da 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 da. Charles was a stem that stayed behind, marking that the beating heart of a family had thrived there once, and might again, but he was getting older now. Nurgen's gut told him to pull one of his favorite books from his shelf and read it until he forgot about the whole thing. 
But the broker's sharp tone and the contract's crisp, formal print took the energy from his legs. He supposed he must have read everything in that house twice over anyways. He bit his lip in frustration. His family had gone. His brothers and sisters had flown to New York and San Francisco to get real jobs. He had been the only one stupid enough to keep the orchard. A gust of wind rattled the screen door. The breeze carried the scent of rain inside, but Charles knew too many years of drought to hope. The thought itself annoyed him. He swore aloud, snatched a pen from the can, knocking it over, and signed the contract. Over a dozen places needed to be initialed or signed. He plowed through, page after page, a sinking feeling of loss twisted in his stomach, but he ignored it and continued. Toward the end, his hand started shaking, and he signed the final line of the term sheet with a hardly legible scribble. He jolted to his feet. The chair, his chair rocked back and slammed against the bookshelf. Head down, Charles pushed open the swinging screen door and marched outside. The wind rustled the contract's pages on the table behind him as he continued past his porch and onto the dirt driveway. He noticed that he was standing on the exact spot where the broker had come, had first come with the sales proposal. The reds of the setting sun stone sh so shone clear through the sky, unobscured by the city's pollution. For now, the northern wind held that held the black smog cloud at bay. Charles turned and paced That's this is the the orchard one. This is kind of the final the final version. Sorry, I I, <laughs> I'll, I it, it, my my Microsoft is in full screen, so if I don't respond to a comment for like a, a second or two, um, don't uh, don't hate me forever. Um, for now, the northern wind held the black smog cloud at bay. Charles turned and paced on the soft carpet of grass between his house and his orange grove. Images of him and his sister playing tag washed over his mind in the sweet scent of freshly cut grass that used to follow his father's lawnmower bit his nostrils. He remembered his father sitting on the porch steps and reading the Iliad aloud to the family. More often than not, his father would add a few twists of his own to the story. He pictured the stout broker swinging a wrecking ball into his porch and shuddered. In a few moments, months, his home and his memories would be swept away to make room for development of cookie-cutter houses. Squat buildings with quarter-acre yards, stiff crabgrass, and cement sidewalks would uproot his orange trees. Small porches and white stucco pillars would replace the wooden floorboards of his wraparound porch and his grandfather's rocking chair. Entry rooms, two car garages, and, dimming, and dining sets would take place of the nooks would take the place of the nooks, crannies, and broom closets he had haunted as a kid. His home would become an entire neighborhood. With a laugh at how sentimental he'd grown, Charles kicked a rock and tromped up the steps to his porch. The screen door swung lazily at his side as he settled down in his grandfather's rocking chair and stared out at his land and let the chair's movement ease his mind. Hector Odysseus, or another hero from the Charles's books, would never sell his home for quick cash. But the broker was right. He needed the money, and the drought looked like it was here to stay. He didn't know how many more seasons he could last with the bad weather, but it sure wouldn't be many. He pictured himself lounging on a plush couch in some stylish Santa Monica apartment. The image made him laugh so hard he nearly fell out of his chair. Bad seasons had come and gone in the past. It had three farmhands quit during harvest and survived. Once a fungus had rotted half the oranges off his trees, but the orchard still had been able to produce a profit. That had been long ago. Don't come with that have been long ago. That have been long ago. Since then, time had faded his sharp blue eyes. Eh, I already kinda have those positives. I'll just take that. Time had faded his sharp blue eyes to gray. The shoulders that used to fill out his flannel jacket had narrowed to those of a coat hanger. He was getting old. Charles turned to the horizon. The hilltops cut the sun's dim orb in half as the afternoon waned. The wind drew the scent of rain and wet earth into the crisp air. He set his jaw, reminding himself that every forecast predicted another year of drought, and tried not to pay attention to it. The broker's contract fluttered on the kitchen table, and the screen door clapped again in the breeze. This time, Charles couldn't hold back a smile as he inhaled its sweet aroma. He leaned back in the sky. He leaned back and stared as the sky dimmed. Leaned back and stared. And the uh, oops, dimming sky.
In a flash, a star sprang into view. The rocking chair swung forward as Charles moved in for a better look, his jaw tight with expectation. Another star appeared, just above the purple cloud. A purple cloud. After it, two more. A grin spread across his lean cheeks. He stretched back in his chair and watched the rest appear as the sun dipped below the western hills. The wind crescendoed, and he heard it brush the signed term sheet and contract off the table. The papers rustled in the breeze and pressed against the screen door. The house glowed orange and gold in the low light. Charles propped up his feet on the porch rail, and his eyes shone a brighter blue for a moment. A final gust opened the screen door. The fluttering pages of the contract rolled across the porch. Charles didn't move to stop them. The wind picked up again, and the documents tumbled the rest of the way into the driveway. Under the driveway, he took a deep breath, inhaling the aroma of vegetation in the air and the coy suggestion of moisture the wind carried. Charles sat calmly, confidently, watching the stars flash in the sky as the broker's papers bounded westward into the soft reds of the sunset. The End Ooh, he's getting old. He's redundant for... Oh. Good call. You should do. Uh, you should do Judy Dawn editing. You have really good notes. He'd have a strong reaction in his thoughts. Hmm. Um. The neighborhood. Uh, where is that part? Maybe it's just like a like a shutter, I think. Oh, yeah, I have that too much. <laughs> I already have that. Let me think. Hmm. Indeed. I I'm not complaining. <laughs> oh, this is yeah, this is uh, this is the one from before. Let me see, scene agitator. Yeah, I do want to put that scene agitator in. Um, and put it in. Hmm, yeah, what's his emotional response to all of this, I think is the right question, Judy. Uh, I don't know. My The thing I'm trying to figure out is whether, yeah, because I think he has that reaction to the broker image as the shutter. Um, I don't know if it's probably a little bit overdone already. Because I'm worried, I'm, I'm like right on the fence of like this being a little bit melodramatic. <laughs> so I'm like trying to like tone down some of the emotion stuff. Hmm. Maybe it's like he felt an itch at the back of his throat, like he's about to like get choked up. I don't know. Yeah, that's probably true. Maybe it's just like...
I told you, Foxy is a really good editor. You guys, uh, if you ever, if you ever um, want the the Foxy lady to edit your stuff, she's uh, she's a rock star. Um. Uh, okay, and then I, I think that's pretty good. You realize he was scowling. Cool. And then the one I wanted to look at was uh, what Judy was saying about doing a scene agitator up here. Hmm. Maybe like the broker starts like crumpling up a leaf and it's like hands and he's like, stop that, man. <laughs> it's not cool. <laughs> Let me think. Um, Safety reason it can allow it. Hunch to bewilderment is taught and thing. I think it'll form like me a little place like that, do you? Uh... I don't think an old farmer could live in a place like that, do you? Yeah, now you re repeated like me in that twice. I'm glad I caught that. I don't like that. I didn't like that phrasing. Let me think. I'm trying to think of a good scene agitator here. Oh, it's almost 11. Ooh, I may be, time may be closing in on me. Ugh. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, I may have to tackle that one tomorrow. I got I got work bright and early in the morning, sadly. But uh, thanks for hanging out, everybody. I um, great notes and a nice little crew as always. I'm I'm always like so um. Interesting. Raises his hand and dryly lands there, and he crumbles it. Uh, yeah. Um, let me see. Raises hand. Um, hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I'll just add a comment. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. Night. <laughs> so, yeah, it's my ADD. I uh, <laughs> immediately get distracted. Well, well, thanks, uh, Ogene, and and dude, send over your work. Like I said, I, I, um, you know, the primary purpose of this stream is actually editing. Um, and we'll do an edit with Fox uh, on Friday or Saturday uh, this weekend, which is all the cool, fun Christmas stories everybody did. If you haven't, um, you know, written it yet, it's okay. I wrote mine yesterday, um, so feel free to send it in, and and I can uh, I can you know edit the Christmas stories. But yeah, feel free to send over your writing. I'll put my little email address. I always try to do that at the end. And oops. And yeah, I just, I, I mean, editing is amazingly good for your writing. Um, so yeah, the more, the more you do it, the better, uh, and take care of Foxy lady. Uh, and I'll see you all soon. Have a good night. And it was fun as always hanging out. You guys are always so insightful and, uh, very nice to hang out with. So have a good one. Y'all take care.